What's up everybody and thank you for joining me for another video. My name is Wack4863, but you can call me Wack. In today's video, I'm going to talk to you about Stray Blade. It's a brand new game that just released on April 20th to the Steam Store as well as PlayStation, Epic, and Xbox Series X and S. Now, I received a key from a marketing company that works with Point Blank Games and 505 Games to review this product, so I did receive it for free. However, the fact that I got a key for this game isn't going to sway my opinion of it. I'm going to give you truthful facts about how I felt playing this game. Now, it did release for $34.99, however, on Steam right now, it is discounted 20%, so you could pick it up for $27.99 USD. So in this game, you're going to take control of Farron. That is your main character. You can play as both a male or a female character. And there is good voice acting in this game. You're going to come across a character called Boji, who is going to be your guide and helper throughout your journey in Akria. Now, the key features for Stray Blade are epic boss fights, encounter the god kings that ruined the land in the past, bring their legacy to a fall, and free the land from the shadows of the old era. Harvest their powers and use them to unravel the mysteries of Akria. New domains are waiting to be unlocked. The untold story. Embark on an unforgettable journey and discover the story of Akria and its ancient legacy. Discover the whole history that turned the peaceful valley into a place of war and death. Use this knowledge to destroy the relics of the past and restore peace in the war-torn valley. Changing World Change is part of your journey where every victory leaves a mark in the world. Time keeps moving forward even if you die. Revisit the places of former victory and experience the changes you brought to the world. But beware, your actions will lead to even greater challenges. So let's talk about looks for this game. It is really appealing. It's really nice looking. There's a lot of eye-catching things going on around the world. It does have a kind of comic book style art, but it all really works nicely together. And I had a lot of fun enjoying the scenery and the way that the world looked. Jumping into combat, this is like the sensory overload section of this game. So you have multiple things going on with each battle. First of all, you're going to see a flash of a color from the enemy that you're fighting. That flash is either going to be red or blue. Red attacks you have to dodge. Those are not something that you can parry. Blue attacks, you can parry those attacks, leaving a decent sized window open for your attacks, and that's going to give you the best advantage against the other enemies. I also found out very late in my gameplay that the block function when you have a shield is actually quite good because you can block both the red and the blue attacks. My issue with combat really came into timing for the signaling of red and blue. Sometimes the red or the blue flash would come right before the enemy actually attacked, and other times the red or blue flash was way before the attack would actually even start the animation. So it was very difficult to figure out the timing for both dodging and parrying these attacks. Additionally, while each weapon type has its own combo, I feel like you're going to be very lucky to see that entire combo in combat because the speed at which the enemies recover and are able to strike again is much faster than the speed at which you're actually going to be able to pull off a full combo. And I really wasn't sure why they made it this way until I got a little bit later on in game and became quite powerful against most of the regular enemies where I really didn't need to hit a full combo. I was able to parry and put a few hits in on the enemies in order to kill them. And performing well in combat is really satisfying because there are a lot of different end moves or finisher moves that you're able to pull off against these different enemies. And seeing those play out, seeing the different finisher combos at the end of those interactions is really satisfying. 
Now, personally, I like games that have a bit faster combat style. I feel like this is slowed down. It is more Souls-like, and that's not really the style of combat that I enjoy the most. However, I was able to get into this game, and after some time of playing it, about an hour into it, I really felt like I was vibing with the combat style and that I was able to engage in that but I really do side more with a hack and slash style of combat, something more towards the style of God of War, that when you do that blocker parry, it does happen very quickly, and you get that huge advantage to kind of shred through your enemies. But I think if you're a Souls-like player or you're really good at timing, you should be able to jump into Stray Blade and have a lot of fun with the combat and it shouldn't be too difficult for anyone that has a background playing Souls-like games. Now, I did have some issues and some odd bugs that would come up while I was playing Stray Blade. First and foremost, one of the most annoying issues for me was entering and exiting a cutscene and having an issue where my keybinds that I had changed would revert back to the default keybinds and I didn't know that that happened so I would enter combat and the buttons that I was pushing would do things that I didn't want them to do and this happened on a pretty regular basis where those keybinds just would not continue to save through restarts or reloads or even some of the cutscenes that I went through I had to go back in and change my keybinds again. Another issue that would come up would be an actual display on my screen that was showing me something from my inventory and I would have to enter my inventory and hover my mouse over that item and then close my inventory in order to get that to go away. And that happened on a pretty regular basis when entering and leaving cutscenes. Another issue that I had with the UI sometimes after the cutscenes would be this very large info page that would pop up on the screen. And if you read through the entire info page, mostly towards the bottom there, you can definitely tell that this is not something that's actually supposed to be popping up in game based on the information that's given towards the end. I think this is a big mistake by the developers leaving this in at this point in time. I also found that it was pretty easy to exploit leash distances with these enemies. So if you bring them to the distance that they feel like they should travel and they turn around and run back in, it's pretty easy to get some cheeky shots in on them before they'll actually attack you again. So I felt like this was maybe a little bit too easy to accomplish in most of the areas, definitely allowing you to peel off enemies one by one, bringing them out to leash distance, making them turn around, and then getting those cheesy shots. Leashing aside, I think the bugs that I experienced aren't that bad. I think those could be fixed very easily, and that would make the player experience much better right away. The other thing that's hard to miss with this game is the camera. The camera consistently fights to snap back to center. So if you're someone that likes to run around and look to your left and right and use your A and D keys to kind of run one direction but look another direction, this game is going to fight you with that the entire way. You are going to constantly be snapping back to center all the time. And this happens during combat as well with the target lock system while you may want to look at a different enemy it's very cumbersome to get untarget locked and look at something else during those combat scenarios but the camera will totally fight you the entire time to stay centered it does not want you moving and looking somewhere at the same time which makes it feel rather restricted now, as of the creation of this video, it has mixed reviews on Steam. Some people are praising it for what it is and others are hammering it for reasons like what I brought up in this video. But even with all the whack moments and deaths that I had, I still really enjoyed getting in and playing Stray Blade. So if this is your style of game, it's definitely something that you can take a deeper look at and make a decision for yourself based on the gameplay that you've seen here or the future patch notes that should should be coming for Stray Blade. I'd like to thank all my YouTube members for your continued support. Y'all are absolute legends. If you'd like to become a legend, there's a button that says join on this page. Click that for details. There's two videos on the screen. Click one of those to watch next and I'll meet you over there.